If you like what you see, why don't you think about subscribing? And make sure to check out my channel for videos just like this. What's going on folks? It's me, Mr. Bucket List here. Welcome. Welcome to another Everything On Location video. This time it's on Quantum of the Seas by Royal Caribbean. Let's do it. First, I just want to say I apologize about the delay from this video. I did receive both COVID and food poisoning on this particular cruise. It was a great cruise and a really good ship, but I did get sick afterwards, so I still am recovering. But either way, I want to definitely go ahead and get this video to get out as soon as possible so I can show you all everything on this beautiful ship. So if you're not familiar to this style of video, at least my style of this type of video, I do show everything. So there's going to be a lot of walking. I will narrate as much as possible. And then I also show not only both the daytime, but then I also transition over to the nighttime as well. And then I'll show empty venues. And then I'll show the venues with actual shows going on as well. Just a short little snippet of it. So I hope you all enjoy this video. If you're new here, please subscribe. Definitely check out my channel for more. If you're familiar with my channel, you know the solo documentary is coming up soon. I can't wait to share with you all. Again, it's your boy, Mr. Bucket List. I'll see you soon. Peace out. All right, so first we have the Royal Theater, which is a main staple on every Royal Caribbean cruise ship. This is usually where you find the Broadway shows, the comedy shows, um, the Love and Marriage shows, things like that. It's basically almost stadium seating. It does have two different levels and this oxy is really um, advanced as far as the technology in there. It's a really good place to come to to see a good show. Stop by early if you want a good seat. And then after we leave the Royal Theater, usually, and this is no different on this cruise ship as well, usually it's connected or right nearby the casino. And again, it's no different on this cruise ship. Um, this casino is actually called the Casino Royale. Um, like usual, I do not know anything about casinos, so I really can't give you all any tips or can make, make, make comments on the size of it, things like that. Um, in my opinion, which this doesn't really mean, mean much because this is just not my forte. But in my opinion, this is actually a really good sized casino for this cruise ship. Um, and it actually had a lot of different machines. Um, it just had a lot of different areas, things like that. Unlike on Wonder of the Seas, it does not have that smokeless or the smoke-free part of the casino. That's something that they pioneered new on that ship. So it doesn't have it here. Um, but I will say when I walk through this cruise ship, I didn't smell any smoke, so I don't know if it was because it was closed or what, but I just I didn't smell that smoke. And I honestly never really smell it on any Royal Caribbean ship. Um, on Norwegian, for example, I love Norwegian as a cruise line, but I mean, the entire ship smells like smoke because the casino is right in the middle and it just seeps throughout the entire ship. But I've never had that issue on Royal Caribbean, and this ship is no different. One thing I will say is this casino definitely did get packed during the nighttime. I got lost and I had to get back to my room and so I walked to the casino around the night, nighttime and it was just so many people. I'm like, this is where everybody's at. No one's at the shows, no one's eating. They're all down here gambling. So it was pretty, pretty funny. Now this is one of my favorite areas, even though on this particular cruise I didn't spend much time here. Um, the music hall is a really cool, like almost bar slash club slash just performance venue. It has everything there, um, and they usually have like the local bands or the smaller time acts that would come here and perform. 
or on my, like on my last cruise, I'm on the larger bands. They kind of rotated from the Royal Theater to this area as well. So it's always something going on here or during the day when it's nice and early, you can come here and just chill and hang out. It's a really nice area. I really liked it. And I just like how open it is. It's multiple floors. You can walk through in and out. No problem at all. It's never hard to get a seat. Now, also in the music hall, near the music hall, is the Diamond Club. I don't have access because I'm not a Diamond member, so I apologize. I could not get in. Um, from what I've heard, it's just a little area with a couple of seats and like a little bar area and stuff like that. So not nothing special. Um, another thing about the music hall is because it is double story, it actually does have views of the outside of the ocean in the background. Um, I saw a couple of people who work from home who are here during the day. So again, it's a really nice area to come to during the day if you want to just get away from the crowds and stuff like that. Or during the nighttime if you want to see a small, low-key show. It's a really cool place to come to. Now, if we keep on walking, this is where things kind of just kind of change as far as the style of ship versus an Oasis class. Um, yes, they do almost look similar in a way, but it's just a completely different feel when you're there. This truly felt like a mall to me and like Oasis class ships, I mean, they're huge, they're open, they're wide, and these are a little bit more tight and compact. So it really felt like I was walking through a shopping mall, which may not be everybody's cup of tea, but for me, I like the change of scenery because I've been on a couple of Oasis class ships and this is my first time doing a quantum class ship. So I just like the elegance and the scale of things and just things like that, um, but it was pretty cool. Um, you have a lot of high-end shops. I'm not someone that goes on cruise ships to find good deals and things like that. So I really couldn't care less about the high-end shops. But it was still cool to see um, when you're walking by. Now this Harp and Horn area, this little restaurant slash bar, this place was always packed. Um, I had no idea they had a different menu. I wish I had tried it out. Apparently it's like a small little cover charge, but I did stop by some for some music, um, which is actually pretty cool, but definitely check this place out if you get the chance. All right, so as we keep on scrolling on along here, um, like I did say, it does feel like you're walking through a mall, which isn't a bad thing. It's just a different feel. Um, you definitely do not feel like you're on a cruise ship unless the boat is just rocking, which it didn't actually do during my cruise. Um, one thing I did want to clarify is a lot of people always ask, how do I get the ship to look so empty? Um, well, the way I do it is I get these videos usually very early in the morning. This is no exception. Um, ironically, because this was a full ship and this was a cruise to Alaska, people are always up at no matter what time it was. Um, so ironically, this video was recorded around 5 a.m. And there was a lot of people just sitting around, hanging out, talking, having a great old time. Um, usually it does not look like this, so it was surprising. But um, that's what time I did this particular video, at least during this time period, was at 5, 5 a.m. in the morning. Now, on my previous couple of cruises, um, this Sorrento's Pizza was one of my favorite places to go, but the quality on this ship just was not the same. I don't really know what was going on with the food on this ship altogether. I'll definitely get into that on my solo re review, my documentary I've got coming out soon. Um, but right now, just as a quick heads up, I did not enjoy the pizza. I think I got it twice, and both times I couldn't finish it. Um, even the Cafe Promenade, which you all will see in a bit, um, that food as well, it just, it just didn't taste the same. I don't know if I'm just too tired of it or too used to it or what, but um, I just didn't enjoy it like I did on my last couple of cruises. But it was cool that it was there. Now, regardless of the food quality itself, if you're looking for food late at night, these are usually your only couple of options, Cafe Promenade and also Sorrento's Pizza, or you can order um, room service. But of course, room service has a $7.95 fee for every time you order it. So if you don't want to pay any fee, you just want to get some quick food, this is the place to come. 
um, heads up at nighttime. These places get packed. You'll see a huge line of people waiting to get food. And then you also have this place, La Pastry. Um, I didn't try it out because this is not the type of food that I enjoy. Um, this one also does have an upcharge as well, so I'll go ahead and just quickly put the menu there so you all can see it. Um, but this is another option. And then we also have boleros. This is a, another staple that's on every Royal Caribbean ship I've been on. Um, it's pretty cool. It's just a standard night nightclub. It's a Latin nightclub, but ironically for this cruise, I don't remember them actually playing any Latin music. Um, it's more just violins and karaoke and things like that. But either way, it was still enjoyable. And then of course you have your guest services area. Um, I did actually come familiar with this unfortunately because I had a lot of issues with my room, my car, things like that. Um, a quick tip, if you need any type of help coming to guest services, um, go early in the morning. They're open 24 seven, so go, go as early as possible. Um, as you all can see in this particular video, nobody was here. Again, this is around five o'clock in the morning. If you go around nine, 10, any time past that, you're gonna wait in line, just being honest with you. So I did want to go ahead and speak about this area right here. This is Wonderland and I did not do it on this cruise, but I did do it on my previous cruise on Wonder of the Seas. I really enjoyed it. The food itself wasn't that good, but as far as the presentation and the experience and things like, like that, I really did like it. Um, I'm actually happy I did it on my previous cruise because as you all can see once I do walk through this one, um, it's not that big of an area. It's like a little small little room versus the one on Wonder of the Seas. It's like a double story area, nice views. Um, it was just a lot on more of a grander style. So I can only imagine if the, if the, the area itself is so small, how the food presentation things could have been. Um, I just, I didn't enjoy the food presentation on this cruise. So who knows how it would have been in here with Wonderland. So again, it's a really cool area, really cool experience. But if you do do Wonderland, I do recommend you do it on a newer ship because it may not be the same quality or experience if you do it on a ship like this. Now, as far as this Shuna bar, this place was always packed. No matter what time of the day it was outside of early in the morning, like right now, um, they always had something going on, people just hanging out. Um, this was a really fun area to go to. I didn't enjoy it as much as I could have because I could never get a seat, um, but they had little games, like they would like guess the name of the song, they would play like maybe five seconds of it and you had to shout the name out. They had bingo, um, they had a guy just playing guitar, piano, things like that. I'm um, just a lot of little games and entertainment and stuff like that and I always had a lively crowd so if you're someone that wants to be around a lot of just show social activities but not necessarily in the theaters or the stage, or the stage shows come here it's a really good fun place to be
And then of course you have your focus photo galleries. So, I mean, they do actually have like areas where you can take pictures in front of like, I don't know, like the staircase and maybe like a little mural or something like that. They have all these different spots around the ship. And then they actually did a photo um, session on the helipad, like around mountains and things like that. I'm sure it was beautiful. I didn't sign up for it because pictures on cruise ships are extremely expensive and I'm solo traveling. I can get pictures on my own. I don't need that type of stuff, but um, they are pretty nice. So not to discourage anybody that does that. This is where you come and take a look at your pictures and see how they look and things like that. So I just had to point this area out again. This is around 530 in the morning and you had the coffee zombies lining up to get some coffee. Um, now I've never had coffee in my life, period. I don't want it. Everything I do is off of adrenaline. If I don't have the energy, I'm just not going to do it. So it's just funny to see. But yes, this is why I was so crowded because people were up early getting coffee. And then, of course, you have your bionic bar. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this actually pioneered on this ship. Um, this was the first of the, of the quantum class ships, quantum of the seas. And this is one of their staples, just their technology, the bionic bar. Um, I've seen this on every other cruise ship I've been on with Royal Caribbean besides Mariner, so um, nothing really new to me, but either way, it's still cool to see. Now, while we walk through this area, I just want to say I truly enjoy how elegant this ship looks as you walk and just look around. I mean, everything is just futuristic, but clean looking and just elegant looking. Um, if I were to compare this ship, it reminds me of the MSC Miravelia. Um, that's the first and only MSC ship I've been on. And even though a lot of people like to hate and just don't like that line in general, to me, I think that's still one of the most just that's just one of the most grandest looking, just cleanest looking ships I've ever been on. And this was like a cross between that and Symphony of the Seas. Um, I really thoroughly enjoyed this cruise ship just walking through it. Of course, when it was busy, it had a whole different feel to it. But it was, when it wasn't busy, when it was slow like this early in the morning, it's a beautiful ship to walk through. Um, just perfect. Around this area is Jamie's Italian. This was my first time actually going there, and this is honestly one of my first times really paying separate for our specialty dining. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I loved it so much. I actually wanted to go back a second time, but they were so booked up, which I understand why. Um, the food was really good. I definitely can't wait to show you all in my full documentary, my solo documentary of this cruise ship. Um, but definitely, if you get the chance, at least come here for lunch, because it's about half off, $25. Um, either way, it's almost an identical menu. It's really good. Check it out. And then like usual, um, it does have an art gallery and like usual, I saw people just buying those pictures up and left and right. It was crazy looking at those prices. Um, but I do like the area of this one. Um, usually they have like in a little hallway near the casino, but this one actually has its own little area off to the side. And it's like in a really good view. So you don't have to kind of like, you don't have to search for it. It's right there, which I really appreciate it. Um, also around this area was the Cafe 270. Um, 270 was one of my favorite areas on the ship because of the shows, the views, and then this cafe. Um, this cafe was actually really good. Um, it reminded me of a mixture of the Cafe Promenade and a mixture of the Solario Bistro. Um, it wasn't open as much as I would like, but it did have breakfast, snacks, and almost stuff right before dinner. Um, and it was just really good. The service was really nice and really speedy. Um, they had things like paninis and wraps and just salads. Just healthy stuff um stuff that will kind of get you get you going before your main courses so i really enjoyed it and like i said i really like the location as well 
And then as far as this 270, so the name comes from the 270 de degree view that you have from the back windows. Um, again, I really enjoyed this area. It's just, it was huge. It had some really good shows, um, great seating during the day and during the nighttime. Everything about this, I really liked it. It doesn't make up for the Aqua Theater to me on the Oasis class ships, but if there was a close second, this is definitely it right here. And another thing about this area is it was just so cool. I mean, during the day, they would actually have like people practicing for different shows on different different cruise ships. So they weren't necessarily performers on our cruise ships, but they were practicing, I guess, on the off seasons for their cruises. So you had people just kind of watching, including myself, just watching them practice. And they had the music going and stuff like that. But they were in like, like sweatsuits and sweatpants, things like that. Like they were just in like their regular clothes while they were practicing so i really enjoyed that we didn't get charged extra to see them anything like that you didn't have to reserve your seat you just kind of walk and just kind of watch, watch them so i really enjoyed that aspect of it um this area itself it just felt like it was always welcome and open for any time you want to come through so i just i really enjoyed this club 270 and then of course at nighttime as well nighttime was amazing they had some amazing parties and shows and everything like that and then including this area is also things like a library, a game room, um, card room, things like that. So it was really cool. I had no idea this was here until I was just kind of, of course, doing this tour, just trying to figure out everything on this cruise ship. And I happened to stumble upon this area. And what was also cool seeing a lot of people that work from home that were in this area as well, just kind of doing their thing with their little head tests and stuff like that. So pretty, pretty cool. And then as far as the dining room, so usually I can go and get an easy, nice shot of everything and it's multiple levels and it's nice and empty and things like that. But they just were not having it on this cruise ship because it was 100% capacity. And so um, I tried to get my best, but I just couldn't get as much as I wanted to. And not to mention the setup wasn't the same as the usual dining rooms. I'm usually it's a nice wide open area and you can, you can look down and see the different floors. That's how not, that's not how this one worked. It was different floors, but they were kind of closed off and they were like split half and half. It was just different. Um, so this is the, the footage I have from that, but like the, this is the best I can do. Um, again, I'll go more to that in my review that's coming up later on. So I always miss out on the conference centers on these cruise ships. I just usually forget about them, but this time I finally made it to one. And of course, it's just a standard room, but it was cool to finally see how it looks, a little microphone and everything like that. If you want to hold a conference, it's fairly easy to do on a cruise ship. Just let them know and they can set something up for you. All right, folks, it's Mr. Bucklist here. Thank you for joining me for another one of these walkthroughs. This time is on Quantum of the Seas. This is an interior with a virtual balcony. That window over there is not working right now, but eventually I'll get it in there. But either way, let's get to it. So as usual, the first thing I want to go ahead and stop by is the bathroom. I'm not right for you all. This is the first time I'm doing any of this. So honestly, this is going to be new to me like it's new to you all. But this is the bathroom. A decent sized bathroom, again, like usual, I'm by myself. I'm not bad at all. Plenty of space down there. It's got the little drain plugs. So if water were to get on the floor, it can just drain straight out. 
So pretty good. It's got the different little areas as well. Not bad. Uh, for two people, this may be a little bit tight, but for myself, not bad at all. And the doors don't slam like one of the seats, so that's definitely a plus. Um, second is we have both the his and her closet or mate's closet, whatever you all want to call it. Um, this is the closet you have. Um, this one's actually different than one of the seats. So this is more like coats and then that one has shelf space. Um, either way, it's cool, more than enough for what I need for my purposes. And then you also have this nice little couch and stuff. Um, I'm kind of noticing a theme. Just looking around, everything that's in this ship is not a bad thing, but it is a little bit smaller than what I've seen on other ships. So just kind of something to think about. Um, again, get the other side of the closet. This one's for like shoes and clothes and things like that. You got your little safe. Um, my bags haven't really come yet, so I don't really have much to put in there, but that's what's going on. Next thing, if we keep on scrolling is, like usual, you have all your um, drawer space and things like that. So it's a good amount. Everything's nice and clean. If I'm not mistaken, this ship was built in 2014, maybe 2015. I'll put a title card in there so you all can see. Um, but it's still in really nice condition. It does have a micro fridge, fridge, so if you're curious about that, it's definitely got one. And then you also have this desk. And so I don't have my second laptop, I just have my one right here. But just like on the other ship, if you have two different laptops, you got more than enough space for both of them. Not bad at all. Now one thing I did not show, let me get off the camera for what's going on. All right. And then the last thing, of course, is the bed. So what they usually do, if it's just you, they'll put both the beds together and make it into a king-size bed. So that's what I have here. It actually looks really comfortable, so I'm really excited. And the cool thing is, it's directly in front of the TV. Um, I believe you can swivel around. Actually, you can't, so the TV is gonna be stuck in this position, but either way, you're right in front of it, so not bad. Um, now, one disappointing thing is they don't have as many outlets as the other ships. The other ships had um, outlets right here and then on the other side as well, and they had USBs and all that stuff. This one doesn't. Um, so what I'll go ahead and do is at the end of this video, I'll go ahead and just do a run through of the outlets. Um, but just know it's not one on this side, it's only one on the other side over there. Uh, but you have your phone, things like that. And then, now this is something new. So they have trunk space, that's dope. Um, so if you want to put stuff above your head, that's up there as well. That's actually pretty cool, I like that. Now what I don't like is right now my TV is not working, so I don't know if it's because the ship hasn't started moving or what, um, but let me show you all how it's supposed to work. So you have this little remote right here, um, I, it took me a while to find it, but I had to look it up on YouTube, but you have a little remote, you press the little button to turn it on, and then when you turn it on, you see it powers on, and you're supposed to get a view of the outside, for whatever reason it's not working. We haven't left yet, so that may be what it is, but just a heads up. And then the last thing is just kind of going over here. So this is where your outlet's at. So basically if you're by yourself or whoever, whoever's here, you're just gonna have this one outlet on the side. So just kind of keep that in mind. So this is about as empty as it's gonna get. 6.30 in the morning on the last day. Of course everybody's all worn out, so this is it.
Alrighty, so now we're heading to the Solarium Bistro, which is one of my favorite places on any Royal Caribbean cruise ship, at least the ones that have them. And the reason why I like them is it's easy in, easy out. It's not a long wait to get in. Um, you can get your food. You can have a quick meal in no, no more than 10 to 15 minutes if you go here. It's really easy to get your food. And it's up from, from breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can take a to-go box with you, a to-go plate with you. Um, and then the food options they actually have are actually really good. Um, it's always really fresh. The one thing is it's not a full buffet like um, the, the actual Windjammer. It does have, it's just, it has options, but it's not a huge buffet. Uh, but either way, it's more than enough for me. It'd probably be more, more than enough for you. Um, it's a really good option to come to. Alrighty, so as far as the pool deck goes, um, again, this is a cruise to Alaska, so the weather wasn't ideal to actually swim. Um, most people that did use the pool deck, they did actually go into the um, jacuzzis and things like that, the hot tubs. Um, ironically, I actually got into the pool deck on the very first day um, in Seattle. The weather was still pretty cold for my liking. It was about maybe 55, 60 degrees. I'm not really sure. Um, but the water was heated, so I went ahead and got in the pool on the very first day. Um, I was the only person in there, and then uh, a young man and his, his his daughter or something like that, they jumped in as well, but it was nice. Um, that was the last time I got into that main pool was the first day. After that, I got into the hot tubs like everybody else. Um, it's a really nice pool. It has a really nice large screen as well. Um, it was just, just a really nice setup. Um, now, ironically, even though I did record this early in the morning, I rarely saw anybody on this pool deck ever like the only people again like, like i saw was people in the hot tubs but people on the actual pool deck sitting out watching things like that i never saw it outside the one time when we were on the actual um when we were in the inside passage going to the glaciers that's when i saw people on the pool deck but outside of that it was empty the entire cruise and then of course there's some other things on the pool deck itself it's going to have a couple of different bars that were always open so i did see people getting drinks from the bars I mean, you have the North Star, which I'll show you all in a little bit, which is really cool. Um, it takes you over and above the cruise ship, the mountain, things like that. Just depending on where you're at, it's going to extend its arm over different areas. So that was a really great experience. A tip about that is you want to try to go ahead and book that as soon as you go on the cruise ship when it's complimentary and it's free. If you want to do it while you're in port or on a sea day, it's going to, it's going to cost additional money. Um, it's like $19 unless you're doing it in the glaciers, then it's $69. Um, but either way... It's definitely worth it to at least try it once. I strongly suggest trying to get it complimentary to see if you like it and then come back later on if you want to pay for it. We are heading into the North Star. Yeah. Extended view. And even the other day, So excited. Hello. Deck 14 or above there, you know? Okay. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Hey, I would take it. Don't think it's a ride at that deal. And then the pool also does have an indoor pool as well. Um, this actually had, of course, more activity than the outdoor pool. Um, so if you want to get a good seat or at least get in the pool, come here early. And then around here, you also have both your towel station and then also... Um, your life jacket station so I mean you definitely want to come here if you have your towels please do not forget that they do close on the last day 
around 10 to 11 o'clock. So if you don't turn it in before the last day, you have to wait in some separate line when you're getting off the ship and they potentially gonna charge you. It just becomes a big mess. So if you rinse some towels out, make sure you turn it back in before it's too late. Now this little area I was actually pretty excited about because they didn't have this on the other cruise ship I've been on and the food menu does rotate, which I did not know. Um, but it's like, almost like a quick service little um, Chinese little restaurant. And the food was actually really good. Um, I just got a random, just a bunch of stuff, um, as you all can see. Um, but I did enjoy it. I went back and got seconds as well. And it was just a nice little place. It was just a different change of pace when it came to the food that was offered on the ship. All right. And then right here we have the living room, which is for um, just teens and things like that to do like stuff like activities and hang out and stuff like that. Obviously, I don't have any kids. I'm not a teen myself, so I didn't go in. So I apologize. I can't show that area. It wasn't even open when I tried to go in there. Um, and then we're going to head on to the Windjammer Buffet. So, of course, this is the main buffet on every single Royal Caribbean ship. This is no different. Um, this one I did enjoy, but my lord, it was always busy. Um, I was so happy to get this footage because I don't know if we were in port or what. I really can't remember, but it was empty. So I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead. This is the chance. Um, but other than that, usually this place is bumper to bumper traffic, people bumping into each other and just so hard to get a seat and people haul the seats beside the window. Um, there was one time I came here during breakfast where there was so few seats that I literally almost had to sit outside. I sat right beside the window in the very back and there was a guy sitting outside because there was just no more seats left and sitting outside on the Alaska cruise on, on a sea day when the ship is just flying by and all that wind. I felt so bad for that guy, um, but that's how crowded this ship was. Um, this is not one of the largest wind jammers. This is a quantum class ship, so the one Oasis class is a little bit larger. But just keep that in mind that this wind jammer does get packed on this ship. Now, one place that wasn't packed surprisingly was the fitness center, um, and, and it never usually is. It actually was a hard time finding this. Um, I had no idea it was like the very end of the ship at the top, um, but this is actually really good. It was a really good size for the size of the ship. Like usual, they always have great views. This one's no, no different, um, and this one also had just a lot of different machines, a lot of free weights, a lot of treadmills, bikes. It was packed for the area and the amount of space that they had to use for this area, this, this fitness center. It was so many different machines, I was thoroughly surprised. And then they had like a little conference room and a ballet room and a fitness room. It had all these different sections as well. So again, really good job with the Fitness Center Royal Caribbean.
right y'all so i am on one of the trails that they have um this sucks this really sucks i thought this was a door somewhere to get inside but apparently not it's so cold up here it's raining wet this is torture And then like usual, they also had a running track and a rock climbing wall. I did not do the rock climbing wall because it was cold and it was closed and I just didn't feel like doing it. Um, but it did open eventually on my cruise. Now something that was new to me, at least on this cruise ship, was iFly. Um, now I have done iFly before on land here in Tampa, Florida. And so I definitely wanted to go ahead and do it here on the cruise ship. Now, just like with um, the North Star, you can actually do this for free as well, but you have to sign up as soon as you get on the ship. It's complimentary. On a sea day, they do charge, but on a sea day, you actually get a longer time to do it. So I said, you know what? It's $29. I'll go ahead and do it. And so I did, and it was actually a really good time. And then, of course, they also have the um, Flow Rider, which I did not do this cruise because it was too cold. It was barely open. I just did not feel like getting in that cold water. Um, but again, that's an option as well. That one they do not charge for. Now before we head into the Seaplex, they do also have an arcade, which is no stranger to Royal Caribbean Cruise Ship. Um, the way it works is you have to actually buy credits and you have to scan your little card and things like that. You can't just use tokens or dollars or anything like that. You have to buy credits first and then actually use the credits or whatever on the arcades themselves. Stuff. Um, but the Seaplex, the Seaplex was amazing. Now, as far as the Seaplex, this actually really surprised me. Um, so this is a nice, huge, enclosed area that had both games, bumper cars, um, dancing classes, all type of stuff. I mean, just, and it had multiple levels. Like, it was a really good time, and it was so versatile. Um, for example, when I first got here, as you all can see, there's bumper cars all over the place. But when I first got here, it was a bumper car ring, and then so I went and did that. And then a couple hours later, it turned into a skating ring. And then a couple hours later, it turned into a dance-off ring and just laser tag. It's so much different things that's in the C-Plex. This is one of my favorite places. Even though it wasn't always busy, which was amazing, um, just coming here and seeing the different setups was just really cool. Not to mention it had the doghouse, which is one of my favorite places to eat for a quick snack there as well. Um, now, if you buy the soda package, you need a place to refill your soda cup. This is also where you want to come to. It's in the C-Plex.
Now, another quick thing about the C-Plex is they do have this Xbox area. So I am an Xbox gamer, even though I own all of the generations of almost every game system out there, PS4, PS4, PS5, Switch, Xbox One X. I have them all, um, but I am an Xbox gamer because of Game Pass, and so it was cool to see this. Now, the funny thing is they actually have old Xboxes, and so they have Xbox Ones, like the old black ones, and then they have the One Ss, but either way, it's still cool to see this on a cruise ship. Alrighty, so I'm gonna leave you all to it. I hope you all enjoyed the rest of this video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, maybe you donate to the channel. I am doing this while I am sick, as you all can probably tell in my voice. But if you can't, like I said, support the channel in any way possible, if you're able to. If not, either way, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you soon. It's your boy, Mr. Bucklist. Peace out. Alright, so let's keep on strolling. Thanks for watching the video. If you like what you saw, please check out my channel for more videos just like this. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Until then, I'll see you next time. Peace.